Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. James Episcopal. Our opening hymn is number 551. <laughs> from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please turn to page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth His praise, to hear His Holy Word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him let us kneel in silence and with penitence and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy let us confess our sins to God and our neighbor Please join together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy, have mercy on us and, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to God and the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The, page 81. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. And on page 82, the Jubilate. And we can say this together, please. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, 
His mercy is everlasting, and His faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to, <laughs> glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now, the lesson. The first reading is from Zephaniah 1, 7, 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at end. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink from wine, wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver Silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to The psalm for today is Psalm 90, and we will pray the psalm in unison. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O oh child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80, yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, 
brothers and sisters. You do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talents in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all, to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, 
Even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon this morning was written by the Reverend Dr. Marshall Jolly, who serves as rector of Grace Episcopal Church in Morganton, North Carolina. He completed his undergraduate work at American Studies at Transylvania University, that one I have to look up, and his graduate and doctoral work is at Emory University's Candler School of Theology. He curates Modern Metanoia Org, a lectionary-based preaching and teaching resource. It may be that the most important and consequential question ever uttered in the history of humanity was Pilate's three-word question asked of Jesus. What is truth? In his dystopian novel, 1984, George Orwell coined the term doublethink to describe the phenomenon of rejecting things we know to be true or accepting things we know to be false in order to fit in with our peers or party or affinity groups. And while Orwell was writing fiction, he was revealing a truth that hits close home, all of us, from time to time we tell ourselves things that we know are not true. Of course, most of the time, these little fictions we pass off as truth don't come from a place of malice or quite the opposite. We tell ourselves stories about one gro why one grocery store is better than the other or why this brand of car is superior to that or why our basketball team is the best in the league. And to some degree, that's simply a part of who we are. We tell ourselves these things in order to build a sense of identity and character. But these aren't the only tales we try, to tri we try and we trick ourselves into believing. One more credit card will not bankrupt me. One innocent little office flirtation won't hurt my marriage. God doesn't really love me. And then before we know it, the very things of which we've convinced ourselves turn out to be the lies that destroy us. And although we are acquainted with this phenomenon here in the 21st century, it isn't anything new. In the days of the prophet Zephaniah, the people of Israel had gotten into the habit of convincing themselves that perceptions were true and facts were false. God doesn't care about us, they said. God is off doing other things. What business is it of God's anyway? How I conduct myself. What God doesn't know won't hurt me. We can't trust God to protect us, they lamented. We've got to take care of and protect ourselves. God won't make us happy, they scoffed. Our mansions and our wealth and our power over other people, those things will make us happy. But Zephaniah did what prophets do and spoke the unwelcome and hard-hitting truth to a people who were convinced otherwise. The voice of God rushes forth hotly from the lips of Zephaniah. I will search Jerusalem with lamps. I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste and though they build houses, they will not inhabit them, 
and though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. For the great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. Neither their silver nor their gold will able them to save on the day of the Lord's wrath. The fire and his passion on the whole earth shall be consumed. A terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. At the core of Zephaniah's prophetic poetry is a passage so shocking and clear that it slaps us in the face. The people of Zephaniah's day thought that God was irrelevant, a relic of a bygone era, whose supremacy was once and for all been eclipsed by the attainment of the pinnacle of human knowledge. Those who lived in Zephaniah's day considered themselves free to do and act as they pleased, looking out chiefly for themselves. And then, and only then, maybe, if they got around to it, they might consider doing something magnanimous for someone else, because it would make them feel good. Sound familiar? Zephaniah proclaims the truth that people in his day and our own have exchanged for a lie. Life is beyond our control. And the more we try to control it, the more uncontrollable it becomes. An oil refinery explodes halfway around the world. We read about the environmental costs and the billions of dollars paid in reparations, but we don't know anyone who knows anyone who works for them. So it's not, it's not our problem, right? We've got everything sorted out in our own well-managed, tightly controlled lives, right? But then we realize that the fish we're eating and feeding our families comes from that region. Oil and toxins seep into the bedrock and pollute streams and rivers and growing fields hundreds of miles away where the produce that stocks our refrigerators is grown. The retirement plan we're enrolled in, trying to secure our future, is heavily invested in that company. The United Kingdom votes to withdraw from the European Union. Brexit, we called it. Okay, it's their choice. That's how democracy works. But how does it affect us? The Eurozone is the second largest buyer of U.S. Treasury bonds, not to mention a huge importer of U.S. manufacturing goods. What affects, what affects their economy today will affect ours tomorrow. The more we try and anesthetize ourselves into believing that we've got it all figured out, the deeper the truth cuts when the facts are laid bare. But hold on for a second. Zephaniah is a tiny three-chapter minor prophet wedged into the near end of the Hebrew Bible. In the entire three-year cycle of the lectionary, we hear a reading from it but three times. Most of us probably can't remember ever hearing a sermon preached on Zephaniah. So can he really be all that important? Well, as it turns out, Jesus was a preacher after Zephaniah's own heart. He tells a parable about slaves who are given gifts in different amounts. And although we are quick to equate these so-called talents with money, the parable could just as easily have spoken of kindness or creativity or generosity. The slaves who take their gifts and use them to offer other creative and elaborate and much needed blessings in the world around them are rewarded, 
when the Master returns. But the one who takes what was given to him and hoards it up only for himself is condemned. If we can find a way to sort through all of the advertising and the marketing and the perception, we arrive at a truth that both Zephaniah and Jesus are desperately trying to tell. Our vocation is not to try to be in control of the universe. No, our vocation as followers of God, as we meet Jesus, is to share the abundance of grace and mercy and love that has been entrusted to us. We are commanded to plant seeds of generosity, knowing full well that we may never see a return on our investment. We are commanded to show kindness to people who don't deserve it. We are commanded to love those who try their hardest to be unlovable and to forgive those who have gone out of their way to be unforgiven. The day of the Lord that Zephaniah and Jesus proclaim does not have to be a doom and gloom, end of the world scenario. For those who receive their God-given gifts with humility, and then go and share them with their world. The day of the Lord is a day of rejoicing, a day when our world that has long been turned upside down by greed and oppression and hate will be set right by peace and justice and love. The question is, what will we do with all that has been given to us? Will we keep it locked up and hidden away under a bed? Or will we take the risk and open our hearts to share it openly and freely and radically with the world? Amen. On page 87, together we will read the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, shine for your for light, light has come, and, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrines the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or by night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. At this time, together, we will say the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time together, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The Lord's Prayer, page 97. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the noble the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect, collect of the day. Blessed, blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in your Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And together, a collect for Sundays, page 98. O oh God, God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Guidance, page 100. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. And uh, at this time, uh, the prayers of the people, and uh, it will be Randy Hope. The prayers of the people, Form 1, found on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Lewistown, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and the orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all of the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray this morning for Helen, the Shoki family, Stephen, Tom Reed, Susan, Matt, Julie and Rich, Caleb, Melissa, Harry, Carl Jensen, Kitty, Elma Decker, Tom, Mark, Elizabeth, Aaron Kochman, Kathleen Woodward, Bill Collins, Heather, John, Gabby Olson, Kathy Whitaker, Dorothy, Shana Kellogg, Brian S., Lauren, Larry, Shelley, Kyla Ellard, Linda Roberts, April, Linda Porter, John Northey, Shar Cookson, Jack, Colin, Christina, Judy Fry, Barbara Bayer, Tracy, Mary Brown, Legeta Clayton, Austin, Bill, Mike Messina, Mary Jane and family, Gloria, Kyle and Shay Trafton family, Michael Huntley, Mary Kay Haugen, Sister Ann Walsh, Ben Tuss, Liz, Jim Devine, Stephen Urosko, Alan Shamma, Dave Leiniger, Gabe, Leanne, and Emily Kilzer, Jane Olson, Chris, Jean Little, Haley, Molly, Michael Shea, Michael, Katie Jackson, Heidi, Joe Shipman, Jordan Michelle, Becky, Jermaine Stivers, Maria Whitcraft, Elaine Killam, Hannah, Janice Hansen, Donna Gleaves, Leo Walker and his family, Jeanette Priest, for all in recovery, for all those serving in the military and their families, especially Sam Frank, Seth Walters, Emily Olson, Kevin Anderson, and Brandon Anderson. For those working in essential services, including Kathy Katie Jensen, Bridget Owen, Bill Holmes, and Garth Hazer, and all those serving on the healthcare front line, all those working in local businesses, social workers, truckers, sanitation workers. For these we pray and give hearty thanks. For those worldwide and here in Fergus County suffering from COVID-19. We pray for those impacted by wildfires and pray for those who have died. In the communion of St. James and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. At this time, our offertory hymn uh, number 541. <clears throat>
This is Dean. This year, um, especially over Thanksgiving, there'll be more people that are isolated and alone on Thanksgiving because of the pandemic and all. And we are having a Thanksgiving Meals on Wheels. We are planning on feeding 250 people and we will be assembling the meals at the Trade Center and then bagging them up and be delivering them to the homes of the people that request them. We have put posters up throughout the city and we're going to put slips into the uh, Meals on Wheels programs bag so that they know how to call. And all of this comes at a price both financially and with workers. Uh, we have three other churches that are going with us, doing it with us. I do have a need for people that would like to make a turkey in their own home. We will provide the turkey um, and we would expect it to be baked in. We are going to deliver from two to four. So we'd like the turkeys uh, delivered to the trade center by noon, 12 o'clock. We also need people to volunteer if they want to make pies, um, pumpkin pies and need people for Thursday for working in the kitchen out there and assembling the meals and also for deliveries. We, the more people we have delivering, the more, the faster they get delivered, the better, the more warm they are and, and all of that. So it doesn't take forever. Um, and then of course, we're going to try to have the kitchen crew do the cleanup while this is all going on, but it's always nice to have extra help cleaning up because everybody's tired by then and in poor spirits. So if you can, if you have any uh, urge to do any of those things, uh, you can go online to donate uh, on Realm or you can send a check and put um, Thanksgiving dinner in the memo section. If you would like to volunteer to work or have any questions about that, please call me at 366-2790. And I believe it is on our Facebook page and on 
our website. So, but feel comfortable calling me um, if you if you have any questions. And thank you all. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, at this time, oh, wait, hey, Paul, Paul, I, yes, I had one, I, this is Rachel. I had one other announcement. Um, okay. For those of you who noticed that we pray for our service members, members, we pray for Emily Olson, and um, she's at a base where those service people were killed, and she is safe. And so oh. I do believe that I praise God that our prayers protect our dear friend Emily Olson. Okay. Thank you very much, Rachel, for letting us know. So. Okay. If if we have no more announcements, uh, please turn to page 101 for uh, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving of ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And uh, a prayer to St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is number 680. 680. Thank you.